Environmental Management. Welcome. This is the Environmental Management Commission meeting of October 27th. I will uh, start. Well, I've got somebody saying the Zoom link isn't working again. So resend it with email. We are having connection difficulties. Uh, so sorry about that. Bear with us, please. Um, Trying to get Rick Gaffney back. I see your, your beach picture, Rick, just not you. Yeah. Okay, um, after a slight delay, technical delay, which hopefully will uh, not occur again. Welcome to the Environmental Management Commission meeting of October 27th. Um, I am going to call roll because I think we've got a quorum present. Um, District one is uh, John Burns. Say aye or wave. Aye. Thank you. Uh, District two is Elise Robinson. Yep, I am here. Great. Um, District three is Carrie Ho PE. And I think she's one of the ones maybe having trouble connecting. Um, hopefully we'll see her later. Uh, District four is John Olson. Here. Here, my phone is still working. He is connected to my phone sitting next to my computer. So hopefully that's gonna work. Um, District five is Melissa Cardwell. She is out today. Uh, District six is Lee McIntosh. I saw you, Lee. There you are. Um, District seven, Dee Fulton. Hi. Great, thank you. Uh, district eight is Rick Gaffney. Here. And I am Georgine Adams, the chair at, with district nine. Uh, so I hereby call the meeting to order at 912. So we're not too bad. Um, <clears throat> first, oh, I've got a whole bunch of chats. Um, yeah, the saddle road's closed. <laughs> what else is new? Oh, for four hours, how nice. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the next uh, business is uh, approval of the minutes of September 22nd. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second, Fulton. Second Elise Robinson. Okay, um, any discussion, corrections to the minutes? As usual, Peter did a yeoman's job recording and write, writing all that stuff. Uh, hearing no discussion, uh, would like to call a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Any opposed? The um, minutes are approved unanimously. Um, and we'll be talking about changed rules for remote meetings uh, at the end of this meeting. Um, and we'll talk about motions and votes uh, when we get to it. Um, as for the statement for the chair, thank you for bearing with us. Um, <clears throat> hopefully we uh, can get all the, the links straight next time. Uh, I do want to uh, invite and acknowledge we've got two uh, representatives from um, DEM, uh, because Ramsey Mansour could not make it, we are lucky to get Mike Kaha, who is the, I think, acting division chief for uh, solid waste, and also Dora Beck, the division chief for wastewater. So they will be covering for DEM. In addition, we have Senna Barrick, who's with the recycling group, and uh, is always available for uh, answers to our questions. So um, 
I'm hoping that we'll have a, a good meeting. As you saw, we got a nice lengthy uh, report <laughs> from the director. So hopefully we can make some, <clears throat> excuse me, some progress here. Uh, next up, our um, public statements um, for items on the agenda. And I understand that Sandra Demerol and uh, Jerome Warren are interested in speaking on item 7ABA, which is on our favorite topics of Nahalehu and Pahala. Um, is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak? Hearing none and hoping that that's not a problem of people not being able to connect. Um, Sandra, would you like to speak at this time or later when we get to item seven? Uh, we'd like to speak now, if we may. Uh, Both you, you and, and Jerome. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> Go ahead. I think I've got my timer working. You've got three minutes. I'm usually brief. I'm Sandra Demorell in Nalehu, and I'm speaking to um, agenda item 7A, the legislative update um, regarding resolution 23921 of the County Council, securing $2 billion in innovative funding for the state funding for the DEM wastewater projects. Good morning, Chairman and um, Commissioners. Today, I hope to bring to your attention that by withholding UIPA information, DEM is operating in the dark and contractors are accountable to no one. Factually, on August 25th this year, I sent a UIPA request for the financial information for the Pahala Wastewater Project's new design plans since fiscal information, which I never received. This UIPA request is just another example of them not providing transparency and accountability for current unbuilt projects. So I just have to ask, why hand another 2 billion to the same contractors for more design on the same projects? What if DEM is magically handed a blank check for $2 billion, a sum that makes me shudder, I must admit, $2 billion tomorrow? The problem of spending it wisely with public transparency and accountability remains unchanged. My suggested solution, which is in accordance with state and federal law of environmental review, is just do a programmatic countywide wastewater EIS to include reasonable consideration of all the proposed treatment alternatives. This would be from the wastewater um, the, the cesspool conversion committee and the state level, as well as all these um, proposed alternatives that have been, been emerging recently. Um, but consider all these um, alternatives and also provide broad citizen participation in the county's wastewater decision process. Then you can supplement these, um, this broad EIS, programmatic EIS, with site-specific review for individual projects. This way, DEM can stop paying contractors to waste time and money on endless designs that are never built, like in Pahala. I mean, how could Brown and Caldwell not see that there was a slope there and understand that the people were telling them that there's lava tubes. This is not a surprise. Mahalo for your attention to my suggestion to do a broad programmatic EIS for all the county wastewater alternatives before throwing good money after bad. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandra. Um, I think we may uh, touch on this in the discussion on uh, legislative issues, if you can hang in there for the meeting. Um, Jerome, you have three minutes. I'm Jerome Warren in Na'alehu, uh, item 7B. Uh, my written testimony was published in the Hilo newspaper. Today, the director is vague about the Na'alehu sewer project. I will talk to any commissioner about the project. My number is in the phone book. I have letters telling from 
I have letters telling me that the construction will start in 2011 and 2013. My communication with the EPA started in 2003. We still talk once a month. This project is supposed to be completed in 2023, not 2027. I just talked with them this morning. It's 2023, not 2027, like, like your director is telling you. Uh, so is it 2023 or 2027? Your director's report is not clear. The funding source is not clear either. Your director's report no longer says anything about water shutoff for non-payment of sewer bills. Has this issue been settled? It was on previous reports, now it is missing. How, how can the sewer department shut somebody's drinking water off? My sewer bill is for an illegal gang cesspool. Will you shut my water off? All of your sewer problems in Kau could have been solved back in the Obama administration, but wastewater scientists abandoned a simple solution in favor of an experiment. They are still getting paid to set up their experiment. This district six, the district six former commissioner is a scientist, yet he obfuscated my concerns at previous commission meetings. It is the ivory tower syndrome. This former commissioner is now lobbying you. Is he registered? Do you hold him to three minutes? Uh, nobody, money, money will not solve the sewer problem in Na'alehu. Uh, Hawaii Island does not have enough tradespeople to do the construction. Big Island tradespeople need to work on failing infrastructure in Hilo and Kona, not a wastewater utopia in Na'alehu. And how will this project affect the town's bypass route? This dotted line, uh, the bypass easement, is on the, the plat maps, but not on your plan map. The community has no opportunity to learn anything about this project. Mahalo. Thank you very much. And I, I apologize, there's construction going on <laughs> right next to me. Um, and uh, I can't do anything about it. Um, the uh, Again, we will have um, some discussion about the status on Pahala and Nahalehu um, from DEM at the um, item seven. So if you can hang in there again uh, or catch up on the recording, uh, we uh, encourage you to. Uh, if there are no other public statements, um, we'll move on to uh, unfinished business. Uh, first item is, um, as you recall, we'd come up with some individual priorities of things we were going to work on and uh, give you an opportunity now to, to talk about whether what projects you might have been looking on, what you've discovered, um, just so we're aware of it, but also encourage that if you've got enough together and ready to get it agendized on our meetings, we're uh, more than happy to discuss it and uh, look at some information. I'll, I'll kick off with just a, a couple of quickies. Uh, Senator Berg and I are working um, with a contractor to do the life cycle assessments of our different recycling streams. And we've been figuring out what data sets to use uh, with a consultant. Um, not ready for a prime time presentation just yet. Um, I also was involved in a conference call brainstorm with Heather Kimball, who is uh, working away at looking at our council um, member Kimball, working on uh, recycling and EPR initiatives. And we were just brainstorming different um, ideas. So not as EMC, but as Georgine Adams, who's been in this field for a long time. Uh, anybody else have anything to comment on? Uh, Rick, you had added to our reference folder um, a, a nice long technical paper. <laughs> if there's anything you wanted to comment about that. 
Um, <clears throat> not, nothing more than to please read it if you have the time, because um, it is it does provide alternative approaches to um, what seems to be our biggest issue. Um, I also wanted to report with regard to my uh, priorities that one of the things that we're learning with regard to sewering Honokahau Harbor, which will be done by the state, is just how difficult it is to do something like that. Um, even though there's all this talk about trillions of dollars of federal money being available, um, the truth is that if you actually begin to pursue some of those dollars um, through the various grants that are available from EPA, from Economic Development Authority, from Department of Agriculture, and so on, um, it quickly uh, becomes extremely difficult um, because of the information that's needed for the applications, and also because, I mean, one of the, one of the meetings that um, Jerome Nickerson, who's the Hawaii District Manager for the Boating Division, one of the meetings that he went to uh, nationwide pursuing uh, EDA funding, Economic Development Authority funding, uh, there were 17,000 people on the call. Um, <clears throat> and every single one of them thinks that they're going to be able to get a piece of that money. Um, and if you talk to the experts, they'll tell you that um, it's something like less than 10% of the people that apply for these monies actually get them and actually are considered qualified. One of the issues that we ran up against is that if you pursue federal funding, then you have to do a federal EIS, which is a much more complicated um, EIS than uh, one that, that you can do at just the state or county level. So um, that changes everything. So the bottom line is that although it sounds like there's a lot of money out there and it sounds like there's a lot of people willing to help solve our problems, the reality is that when you pursue it, um, you essentially need somebody working on it full time. Nickerson is actually, God bless him, going into his office on Sundays on his own time and pursuing these applications. Um, and as I understand it, there is no one at DEM who is currently pursuing uh, federal or state grants um, because they don't have a grant writer on staff. Uh, and I believe that the county as a whole um, has a very limited number of people with, with uh, background and experience in grant writing. So without that, it, it just, it makes a lot of what we're talking about uh, ex exceedingly difficult. So um, we need to, we need to consider all of the, the different ways that uh, funding could possibly be available to us. And um, one of those is public private partnerships. And um, there is some reluctance on the county's part. Uh, the county presumes that the Kono decision prevents them from doing public-private partnerships, but that's apparently not correct because city and county of Honolulu is regularly doing public-private uh, public partnerships for wastewater management. So um, it is an option for us and we need to get past this uh, roadblock at the county level that says we can't um, because there are some obvious places uh, Keho um, and the tail end of uh, Ali'i Drive and also Puako um, are obvious places where a public-private partnership could solve an immediate problem. So that's, that's my report. Okay, thank you, Rick. I think um, we might circle around uh, again when we uh, get to the um, wastewater discussion with DEM. Um, I will unfortunately note that <laughs> Mike Kaha uh, from Solid Waste has been called away to deal with this issue on the Saddle Road. So <laughs> we'll see whether or not he can come back uh, to help deal with that. Um, life is just beyond crazy. Um, anybody else like to report? If not, We'll move on to the fact that we did send on the 20th um, the letter about the Keala Kehe wastewater uh, treatment. It's in the package in the reference file. Um, and uh, we'll see what kind of, of uh, response we get from 
the mayor, the council, and the uh, environmental committee that it went to. Um, was there a comment? Nope. Okay. Um, you know, my my construction guys next door are having fun. Um, so next up, I think um, I'd like to share my screen if I can for um, discussion on solid waste funding and recognize that, is this gonna work? Can you see the whole thing? Um, the same kind of concepts may or may not uh, apply as well to wastewater. Uh, and I will remind you that we've, we've sent three different letters now um, dealing with wastewater funding, and maybe we need even more. Um, but the same kind of thing may be appropriate now to uh, do around solid waste. So this is just kind of trying to wrap up different ideas on uh, where we think the county can focus on um, solid waste funding. I presented at the July meeting, AMC meeting, kind of the breakdown of where the money's coming from right now. Um, mostly the, the general fund property tax. Um, got some coming in on tipping fees, but only on commercial. Recycling gets just a piddle. And even though there is a CIP list of over a billion dollars of, of projects that need to be done, um, that money doesn't happen automatically. It needs to be funded and is subject to the political winds uh, of the time. Um, so I think where we were leaning was to think not only of wastewater as an enterprise fund, but also solid waste management, which is basically treating this as a business with fees for service to manage our solid waste um, with a preferable goal of keeping it out of the landfill um, and certainly out of our, our land and water if we can. So um, I'll assume you guys all, all recall what we meant by enterprise fund. But what I, what I put in here are the different ways that an enterprise fund would look at how do we get more money. Um, I also have to say personally that the, the amount of money that's necessary for solid waste is peanuts next to what we need for managing wastewater. Um, but nevertheless, it's important. It's important to the, the community and to our INA. So um, plugging right along. One approach is to up the, the tipping fees. We have been over a series, I think it was five years, upping the, the amount for tipping fees at the landfill, I don't know, 2% a year. And there another range of increases is going to have to come and be approved by council. Um, and you can bump it up. Uh, hopefully we'll hear some discussion about the residential hauler credit um, that was uh, previously removed, i.e. if you were a commercial hauler and you were taking residential waste, you didn't have to pay a tipping fee. That got reversed, squawks were made, and now the, the uh, DEM is looking at reinstating that credit, but it's a chunk of change that could be uh, brought to bear to, to costs. Um, another thing is, is looking at increased fees for special waste, not the humdrum stuff, but the things that need special handling, um, special uh, concentration and, and control, um, or to penalize people who are dumping into landfill things that could be recycled. Um, what uh, a point that Ramsey made at the um, council meetings he's been at recently is that um, the tipping fees were not built really to, to um, increase with inflation. Um, and so trying to build that in and make sure, <laughs> especially now since we are seeing inflation really high, um, that that gets worked in. 
pay as you throw. Um, pay as you throw was brought up in the uh, solid waste advisory committee and um, was not selected as a high, high priority, but was in there as a recommendation to look at. Um, and if, if people are interested, I can certainly provide some more information to it. But basically, it's incentivizing people to reduce the amount of waste they're putting in the landfill and increasing their uh, recycle uh, because there's a real price differential. It's gonna cost you more if you're just throwing it away as trash, as opposed to recycling it. Better yet, you don't make it in the first place. Um, it has some initial challenges to make sure there's good communication and enforcement of putting the right things in the right bags um, or containers. Uh, it would involve uh, ideally having some more curbside pickup uh, available so there are things to do to make sure that um, we can incentivize uh, doing the right thing, reducing waste through a pay-as-you-throw program. It has been successful in other areas, including other rural areas. Um, we're paying right now through property tax. Um, it's a percent, it's hidden. Nobody really thinks about it, recognizing that you gotta pay for solid waste. And so one recommendation from the ISWMP was to um, draw out as a line item what we're paying for waste and unfortunately increase that line item. Um, establishing a county uh, TAT, the tourist tax that now we're authorized for 3%. The council just discussed this. They're still discussing it. Um, and it's something perhaps we could, um, as a commission, uh, support, but certainly it's something for consideration. I personally submitted some comments about uh, using a portion of the TAT to cover solid waste um, issues that tourists bring to the island. Um, Extend and produce responsibility. We spend a fair amount of time talking about that. I say Heather Kimball is very interested uh, and we'll be taking it to the um, Hawaii County, I can't remember the name of it, HSAC, whatever that, that group of county interests uh, for looking at state legislation. I, I think it's gonna be very difficult to pull off as a, uh, county effort. I think it's a state effort. Um, and there are lots of categories that we could look at. Uh, waste reduction programs, I think we've talked about. Um, there are lots more things. Checking to make sure it wasn't a chat that showed up I need to respond to. Um, increasing recycling opportunities. Um, get some more education out there so people think first to not generate waste in the first place, um, expanding our, our capabilities to uh, reuse materials, uh, B2B is business to business, uh, exchanges of material that could be supported by the county. Um, and the, the policy issue uh, and bans. I'm personally not a fan of bans, but they are a tool. Um, but I do want to remind everybody that organics is our biggest uh, landfill proportion, followed by paper and construction and demolition waste. Um, plastics are 10%, less than 10%. And you can argue maybe it's 12%, maybe it's 11%. It isn't a big deal. The others are twice as much, if not four times as much. Um, but bands are, are certainly an option for us to look at. And then John Olson's uh, favorite, which is the point of sale service fee on products. Um, the more complex it is, the more it costs to administer it. I wrote down here just some of the issues I think we need to think through. I heard Ramsey at some meeting or other said, well, if we could charge 10 cents or 15 cents a pound for everything that comes onto this island, um, we could cover our solid waste. I don't know where you got that number and whether or not it's realistic, but administering a program to collect this fee, if it's even 
possible to do at council uh, county level um, would take some work. Um, <laughs> we were just talking about getting grants. Grants are wonderful when they happen. They are work. There's an art to getting a grant and they really aren't a good sustainable source of money. Um, and you got to pay people who know how to get those grants. Um, and here's what Rick was talking about on the, the wastewater side, the public-private partnerships and how can we uh, get that to happen. Um, those of you who might have listened to the most recent council meeting, um, when uh, Heather Kimball raised the issue of uh, potentially looking at the Kono decision by the HSAC, the county group, um, she got some blowback on it. And it is an issue in this county, um, particularly, uh, and I think there needs to, to continue to be work on how can we make it happen um, so that we can get the things done that we need to get done and not be held uh, back by uh, unreasonable restrictions when it's so hard to find qualified people to um, take all the, the openings that we've got. We've got current contracts in place. As you know, the uh, waste management that runs our landfill, there is effort underway to renegotiate the contract that we have with them. But there are others as well that, that need some work um, and act as a, a barrier to DEM being able to do their thing. Um, I was frustrated once upon a time to find out that schools can't work with PTA organizations to help do recycling. Um, they have to use the county contractor um, because they're a public entity. And that just seems really dumb to me. <laughs> we, we need to figure out a way to do that um, better. We need to make sure that practices are safe, but um, we need every option available to us to look at it. Um, as we did with the wastewater, uh, looking at how you can leverage those energy saving performance contracts, uh, cutting the time it takes to find a contractor and wrap it up because everything involves energy. So if you have an energy savings, um, there may be some efficiencies to uh, leveraging funding or reducing costs through that mechanism um, and just looking at innovative technologies. Again, at the SWAC, the, in fact, it was a DEM who was reluctant to look at implementing innovative technologies, let somebody else prove it and then we'll adopt it. Um, but I, I, I would hope that we'd still keep an open eye out on uh, new ways, new technologies, again, partnering with companies to um, try some new technologies that would work here on this island, given what we've got um, and don't have. Um, but I, unfortunately, a lot of this partnership work needs somebody at DEM who can be the staff person, the oversight person, and work with these contractors and private organizations. And we don't have enough people in DEM to do that kind of work with the expertise needs, needed even just to, to uh, oversee that type stuff. Um, this last one, recycling market development centers, that is looking at ways that the county could connect up different um, partners, knowing what waste we've got and who needs what kind of materials and being more active in terms of uh, developing markets. So that was, that was my big laundry list, um, trying to coalesce it and open to comments, additions, questions. Sure, Jean, I, I have a question. Um, I think it's implied, by the way, this is excellent work, thanks. Um, and I think it's implied in here, um, but maybe not stated directly, that there are uh, profit opportunities from waste materials. Um, in, with wastewater, if we clean it up to um, the right standards, people will buy it. Um, and there are certainly compost 
um, and mulch opportunities. There are contractors, or there are companies already in existence on this island that use uh, the mulch from our landfills and turn it into something that their clients pay for. Um, so I think it needs to be stated. There you go. Thanks. That's my point. <laughs> I can't type, but other than that. Well, yeah, John. Um, my involvement with the community on a, on a broader basis starts and ends with our solid waste and wastewater issues in Florida. Um, I showed up down here in the about 90, 89, 90. And Buna was filled with illegal dumping sites, mounds of abandoned vehicles, and a community that has been um, I don't know how to describe this politely. I weren't looking for a word. Used is supposed to be. Uh, over and over and over again to solve you now the surrounding areas' problems with their waste stream. Uh, we found ways to collect some numbers of thousands of vehicles and get them all the way for free. Uh, it was a question of timing. The price of scrap was up. I knew some people on the wall who were in the scrap business. They came and got it. Um, Having to, having to deal with this in a way other than it's just something to get rid of. It is a commodity. That's, it always comes back to the money. Show me the money. Um, there are ways to monetize all of this. And that's I, my opinion. That's where we need to start. Understanding that this is, it, it is strictly a problem of money. And who is going to pay and what they're going to pay. And take that approach. The technology will change over time and, and it's a system that will certainly evolve. But we have to start with show me the money, see what the what the way where we can get value from the waste stream as opposed to just something to get out of sight. And um, We've had our successes, we've had our failures down here. I can tell you it's a whole lot better than it was. And we have at least succeeded in not letting it get as bad as it was. So I floated a couple ideas about, you know, point of purchase, disposal fees, and those kinds of things. We have to come up with a mechanism because nobody's going to take it seriously until we address who's going to pay for it. That's that's the point on the sphere. I'll shut up. Okay. And, and I guess I would say that the idea of, you know, repurposing our current waste, just as we said in our, our letter, recent letter on Kale uh, Kehe, we need to start thinking about uh, wastewater as a resource. Look at it isn't waste, it's resource management. Instead of just saying, oh, I can't be bothered with thinking another, somebody who might need this stuff, I'm just going to pitch it. We've got to set up systems that can do resource management. And that may be this idea of finding markets. You knew somebody who knew somebody who could connect and use that. That's a, a lot of what's happening on the mainland, at least, for these uh, exchanges between businesses. Um, a lot of it is volume, and that's our, our trial here on this island, is that you, to have a sustainable business, you need to have a sustainable feedstock and buyers. And keeping that system in motion is a challenge. And who's going to do it? Because somebody's got to make enough money to spend their time doing it. John uh, Burns, you may have some commentary along those lines. We're not. Yeah, I mean, there's 
it's a complex issue. I mean, I, I, I think, I think in order to, to, to do something that's going to possibly be effective and we can, you know, as I mentioned before, like try to make change in the short term is just working really closely with the, um, you know, with the county and like the existing plans and, and ideas that they're trying to implement right now and, and just support those to keep them on track. I mean, that's difficult now because there's been overturn in staff and folks have moved around. So this is kind of a reset button has been hit again. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's interesting because so many of the ideas that we discuss and that, that people comment on from the public, it often overlaps these. Um, I, I think sometimes it's just an issue of, of PR in the sense that the county doesn't necessarily have the time or resources to make it clear and, and accessible to everyone what they're working on and what they're trying to do. Um, and that's a conduit we could be here is, is sort of just making things more of, uh, I don't know, aware in the public sector and then also promoting, you know, what seems reasonable and useful to move forward. Uh, you know, just sort of being more specific too, like they're, they're the, the point of sale fees that they're working on, you know, like, again, th those would be ones that I think we would have the best likelihood of enacting in the near future versus ideas that are going to have to start fresh and go all the way through that process to become policy. So in that case, what you're talking about are, are the, the glass, uh, non high five glass, um, extending out the oils, uh, as part of the DIY turn in. Yeah. And even some of the ideas they've had, you know, just charging for green waste for certain folks or having limited green waste times at specific locations, uh, you know, to ensure that people that are commercial operations that are using public disposals are paying properly. Um, you know, there, there's quite a few. Um, like I said, it's unfortunate that it's sort of like a reset with staff shifting dramatically that we're spearheading these efforts. So I, I think now it's almost, you know, going to require going back to those folks once they're the new individuals are on board and, and trying to identify what are their priorities, what do we think are the priorities that are most important to push forward, and then working with them to, to publicize those and get the support in order to make it happen. Any other comments, questions? And what I'd like to do uh, next is just say, okay, now what um, is their value? And I understand that my Kaha is back. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, is back online. Um, what would you like us to do with these thoughts? Um, is there something that we uh, would would it be good for us to write up? Here are the recommendations we uh, have at this time on, on priorities um, or just rah, rah, keep going, find somebody to fill all those holes you've got. Um, what do you think, Mike? You're muted. Um, thank you very much for um, the opportunity to speak. Um, before I get started, um, again, um, Ramsey asked me to join in and, and he apologizes for not being available, but it was something that awesome. Mike, you froze out. Yeah, I got kicked out there for a little bit. Am I back on? Can everybody hear me? I can hear you, although it says you're muted, but I can hear you. Okay. I just was, I just wanted to say um, again that Ramsey and Brenda apologize. They they had to be away for you know um, something that was required for them to be at some training, and um, I was happy to attend. Um, some of the things that was asked of me was to definitely take some notes down and bring it back to Ramsey. Um, I definitely would like to um, offer up some of the things that you guys are asking about. Um, and I apologize. I thought I found a quiet place to be. Anyways, um, yeah, the department would welcome any kind of help that we could get. It's it's obviously a, a particularly difficult time for our budget, and and um, as John had pointed out, it's it's never an easy um, thing trying to talk about these issues and then also bring in the 
the subject of how do you pay for it all, right? It's it's never an easy thing to discuss, um, but that's the unfortunate part of it. Um, having somebody to help kind of plan out a lot of these these discussions um, about what to do with recycling and so on and so forth um, takes money, and and um, it's it, it's quite difficult to continue doing. Um, I, I just a few numbers I just wanted to point out here. Um, just to kind of give everybody a, an idea of what we're talking about. So our, you know, we we really value, you know, I, I live here on the island, you know, many years, just like everybody else here, um, value the scrap metal program. Um, it's something that everybody wants, but there's a, there's a, you know, there's a number to that, right? It's, it's over half a million dollars that we need to, you know, and, and it's better. It's, it was up to about a million dollars at one point um, that you have to put money towards. Um, and we continue to try to bring that program out to everybody. Um, we have, you know, we want to continue, but it's, it's very difficult. And I only share this with everybody here. It's just that it's, it's, it's thing we need to all face, um, in my household, you know, I might want to have HBO. I want, I might want to have all these things, but I only got so much money in, in the, in the bank. Um, metal is... Metal is not something that is prohibited from our landfills. Um, is this something that we want to continue doing right now? Or do we want to put that towards other things? Um, it's just, I'm not suggesting one thing or another. It's just hard decisions that need to be made. What is the priorities do we want to put, put it towards? Is it UMO? Is it plastics? You know, what, what is it exactly that we want to do with the money that we have? So, um, Again, I, I just want to point out again we're losing your voice. <laughs> You're frozen again, Mike. I don't know. Is that better? That's better. That's better. <laughs> Anyways, I, I just wanted to put that out there. I, I don't have anything specific to add to, to any of the discussion other than I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I'm hearing. Uh, I really, I'm just trying to collect the notes and just add my voice to what everybody else is saying here when I get together with uh, Ramsey and Brenda. Well, I guess I, I, I wanted to ask the, the commissioners would you like something formal? Obviously I've written this up and ramsey has got a copy of it. Are there additions you would like to make uh, to it? I... Absolutely. Um, so some of the things that Ramsey is helping the department with, the division with right now is to try to get some more um, bodies administratively, you know, to kind of push a lot of our plans through. So we were, you know, earlier I had heard from Jeremy, you know, um, he, his concern was that there's always these pans, 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 and nothing seems to be moving forward. Um, the struggle with that is that, you know, we we don't have, I mean, our our department, I'm not sure if any, everybody understands the difference between our department and like DPW or planning and permitting. We've got, we've got um, I think we've got one engineer licensed, and then we've got, you know, another engineer, um, two engineers that are um, by trade. And what we need is, you know, more of that at our, you know, at our division. We need some clerks to push a lot of our, our fans through. Otherwise, I agree with, you know, what um, Jeremy said earlier on the public comment is um, it ends up being where we come to these meetings and it's just a lot of discussion and nothing's getting pushed through. So I am asking for some help from the department to get that, you know, to the division. It's long time needed. Um, and if this committee can, you know, help with that, um, I, I would really appreciate it. Um, I, I've been with the division now for eight years and for these past eight years, we, we don't have that. Um, so different from every other. And with the things that we're looking at trying to, um, you know, fix our sites and trying to like, you know, get things done in Wahinu. 
we send one guy out to do everything, you know, um, working with our two biggest contractors, HER and WM. Um, it's, it's so difficult. So I think having that, that kind of administrative help would be a big help for us. So any help that the, this committee can to support that, I would really appreciate it. Well, I'm not so sure what, I'm gonna make sure I'm unmuted. Um, we can do, if we happen to know individuals who could apply for positions, my impression from the council is that they were likewise supportive of the positions that are open. It's, you can't find anybody who wants to take the positions. Yeah. That, um, and and frankly, I was impressed by by um, Ramsey's pitch to the council about personnel being a huge issue for you. And a lot of that, frankly, was jaw dropping seeing how little you guys pay. And that is a state issue of civil service, right? It's not much we can do about that other than, you know, encourage that if you're going to get good people, get people in the, of any kind, but certainly good people, you're going to have to pay for them. Uh, it's expensive living here. Um, but I hear you. And um, I think uh, it's a reasonable request. Um, but formality, which we need to deal with is... <clears throat> Is there something additionally that we should write up? Um, I, I wrote this as me, myself, and my experience with the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. But if the council is comfortable with what I've written, or if you'd like to add some additional comments into it, then we could look at sending it as an official communication uh, to DEM and to council. Um, just asking for input here, guys. What do you want to do? Georgine, this is Elise um, Robinson. I think um, I really like how you organized everything because um, we talk a lot and then, you know, in various meetings. So this is great to keep it going. Um, I also think that we should add or maybe look into more of the potential um, cost recovery you know, what is the potential um, revenue expected from using the materials for other buyers? What, what could the county recover from, from that? Because um, we talk a lot about cost and even in the report, there is a lot of information about what the outflow of money is, but what could the potential inflows be? I think that would also help um, the council um, and us get an idea of just more information, I think would be helpful. I, I have a question, maybe Mike, you could address it. You talked about scrap metal, that it costs you half a million dollars to collect it and ship it, I assume. Um, are you getting paid for it? <laughs> are you online, Mike? <laughs> You're frozen, frozen. again, Mike. <laughs> uh, maybe the first first thing we need to do is buy decent telecommunications equipment for the county. Um, Senna, I see your name. I don't know if you're pr present. Um, I, I, just yeah. as an example, can you make money? What money do you make from scrap metal? Are you giving it to them for free? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Sorry. Well, I, I hope that we're not, but and as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna find I'm out. Hearing, I'm hearing John Olson piping in. Yes, John? Somebody who's been in the scrap business. And it, you know, supply and demand. Yeah. In the scrap metal business, you sit on the on the product until the price goes to the level you want it to based on the amount of space you have to store it. And then you sell it. And then you start replacing the pile again. You know, and it's, it, it's a commodity. Okay. I got oranges and you want oranges. And, and I find out how bad you want those oranges and that's what it costs you. 
but we don't do it like that. We're not handling this like it is a valued commodity, and that's across the board. And, and frankly, I, you know, government isn't in a position, that isn't what they're best at doing by its nature. So the, the whole setup here, um, it's the best that 1950 can bring you. <laughs> really, I mean, you're, it, you know. I hear you. I hear you. Well, and and that's why. No way, not just the reality of what I see when I walk out the door. You know, and you can get, you you know, the internet. Hey, you can get the price of what what they're paying for scrap steel around the world, and look look in an instant to see who's paying the most for what. But. We're not set up to do that. We have to beg somebody to take it away. Right. That's nuts. Well, and and that was kind of that last bullet I put on the the document was these this concept of recycling market development centers. It's getting people who know that kind of business uh, together to monetize the it's not really waste, it's a resource stuff that we are tossing. Um, just, just to put a point on it. Sure. We made those, all of those, uh, those abandoned vehicles in Puna disappear. And it did not cost the county or the state a dime because the price of scrap metal was up. I knew somebody, a buyer, a big time buyer, I said, we got all these cars. He said, the price is up right now. If you'll consolidate them, I'll come get them. And he did. He sent his own forklifts and his own trucks down here, and it all disappeared. And it didn't cost the, the county or the state that died. When was this? So, hmm, Mid-90s. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we cleaned up Sand Hill, which was supposed to be a, a park, and it, you know, it laid there as state land, un, uncontrolled Hawaiian, or, uh, Hawaiian acres and, and orchid land were huge piles of abandoned vehicles, and up a volcano side, there were, you know, tens of acres of, of abandoned vehicles up there, and, and farm equipment just left behind. No, I, I, I believe it. And I think you're right that the, and that's why I put that bullet in there. Um, having, having that focus, you know, just as we put in the, the KLK wastewater option is we got to get our mind back looking at things as resources and how do we move those resources and get value and recognize the value in them and quit burying them uh, because there is value. Unfortunately, it may be they need to stack up into a big enough pile or be collected and congregated so that they are of value. And it's setting up that kind of logistics um, that takes some effort. And one of the things that occurred to me is that maybe what we do is um, similar to what we did um, on the general wastewater uh, letter that where we were talking about the SPCs, is supporting officially in a request to the council, give DEM some money to hire a consultant to work through how best to make our solid waste effort one that's more um, resource management based. Well, I'm trying to, I need to, to wrap up um, yeah. this part of the discussion of just, you know, what, what are the next steps, guys? Do we want to aim for a specific letter that I send to everybody and his brother? Um, do we leave it as just collecting comments and, and we periodically share this and our thoughts with DEM informally? Um, 
Yeah, Georgine, this is Elise. I think we're not positioned yet to make any recommendations, solid recommendations to DEM. Um, and I would like to see this conversation continue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Well, I mean, I think I think we should we should, and I, I don't know. I'm not up on the legalities of this because I'm not sure exactly who this body works for. Um, we should be having some discussions with the county council because they hold the purse strings, and anything that anything that is going to get started is going to come down to where we get the money from. How do we get the money to do it? And we need to have that discussion with them. Somebody does. And I think we all need to be at, involved in this and get more public input on it. I think the public is, these are the people that are, you and me, that are picking up the tab at the end. Well, I, I, John, I, go ahead, Elise. I just said I agree with John. Um, <laughs> Georgine, sorry, I was just going to make a, a comment. I mean, I think these are all good points. And I, I do really like the, the having the unifying kind of document of these issues that's super helpful and a big step in the right direction. I mean, one thing I, I do want to say, though, I think, again, you know, to go from discussions to promoting some positive change, simplicity can be very good in terms of we could write a letter that could be extremely compelling. Uh, you know, but just in the discussions with Mike, if we touch on a lot of issues, it's it's unlikely we're going to hit all of them at once, just considering the complexities of a single one. And so if we move to having more discussions, I think that's good. But one thing to consider moving towards might be picking just to start just one, one issue we want to address in collaboration, you know, with the folks um pushing these agendas and to john's point if it's one issue that is easier to bring that to county council it is easier to push it all the way to being actuated and it's not that we stop at one or we disregard the others it's just trying to simplify the approach and saying okay let's write one letter in unison to support this idea and here's a strategy that we're going to take to try push that to either getting enacted through dem or um you know going to county council and some legislation comes out of it um, so yeah, I, I just think maybe trying to target a singular issue and, and push that forward might actually help uh, get something completed in that regard. Well, we did. We were successful on life cycle assessment, um, which was one of the the priorities uh, that we had come up with out of the um, Solid Waste Advisory Committee. Um, and part, partly, I, I was on that committee for a couple of years, so I'd like to think that we've got um, <laughs> a lot of work was done in there, but there's still, it, it's the devil in the details and it's the lack of staff at DEM, solid waste uh, as well as wastewater to actually execute. Um, Georgine, um, I'd like, I, I agree with John, um, for a couple of reasons, but one of them is if, if we continue to send letters to the council and the mayor and an answer to, to John's um, previous statement with regard to um, who do we work for, uh, that's clear in the charter, we work for both. We're one of the few commissions that's directed to both the mayor and the council. Um, and with regard to that, the mayor does have on his staff a uh, someone whose entire focus is sustainability and a lot of what we're talking about here is sustainability we can't sustain our life on this island if we continue to bury ourselves in poisonous um, waste um, and not utilize the waste that's available to us um, i like john burns idea about approaching the council and the mayor um, with an individual suggestion because I think a lot a lot of times our letters give them a whole range of opportunities and ultimately that's lost in a very complex council process um, and they we basically get thank you for your letter and nothing else happens so um, and specifically I would suggest we there there is an opportunity uh, for a waste management um, approach on this island that's a growing opportunity 
And that is the waste that's being produced by the two major aquaculture companies on this island. Um, they are both in uh, a, a major growth phase. They are both producing a high nutrient waste and they are both looking for an opportunity for what to do with that waste. We also have a ton of green waste on this island and mixing the high nutrient fish waste with the green waste will produce a quality product. Now I can't price that out. I don't know what farmers would be willing to pay for it, but I su suspect it would be pretty substantial on this island um, where a lot of areas that farming is done where there's little to no soil and they essentially need to build soil from scratch. So, um, and, I, and I know that both of those aquaculturists are looking for uh, assisting the county with that opportunity. So maybe what we ought to do is produce a letter that's to the county saying, okay, uh, these companies, Blue Ocean Mariculture and uh, Kohala Mountain Farms um, have this high nutrient waste. We already have this green waste. We want to see a facility developed to combine the two into um, a, a production of a high nutrient compost for farmers that would be available for sale. One of the things the council is going to like about that is possibly, and I don't have the numbers, but possibly that would be a revenue generator for the waste management division. So um, that's kind of a combination of, of both John's ideas and um, and the, the, the concept of sending an effective letter to the council that will get something done as opposed to uh, a multi-idea letter that may just sit on a shelf like so many studies and, and not get followed through on. Well, I am somewhat slipping ahead to the next agenda item uh, was the idea of, you know, we heard from Mr. K at last meeting um, and there are plenty of, of other um, recyclers is to set up a, a special investigation group or an ad hoc committee for um, EMC to do some investigation and gather some information. Um, and I don't know, I mean, yeah, that seems like a great idea, whether it's the best one to tackle or not. Uh, there's the whole issue of handling compost on this island is uh, a mess. And also I think uh, it suffers from them some contractual obligations that they've got with EHR. And um, it isn't something that we just off the fly decide, okay, that's the one. Um, and I'm wondering if we, we roll to the, the next agenda item um, and talk about getting a group together to pull together the information um, and present their findings to us um, and then decide what we're gonna write up and send to our advisees. I have a question with, uh, about this permitted interaction group. I haven't read the, uh, the statute. Um, would that include uh, people from outside of our commission? Can it legally? Well, I guess I let Sinclair, if he's still awake, um, pipe in, but you can go and talk to whomever you need to, to gather information. No, I meant about including them as a, as a committee member on, the, on this permitted interaction group. So a few things I heard earlier. So one thing I just wanna correct is that um, per the Hawaii County code, so I'll, I'll address Rick your question real quick after I just say something real quick on something I heard. So um, per the Hawaii County code, the EMC can advise the Department of Environmental Management and then also provide um, comments and recommendations to the county council. So those are your two avenues to provide um, you guys thoughts, comments, and advice. Regarding the um, ad hoc committee, also called a permitted interaction group, um, that can only be members of the board. Um, but as Chair mentioned, um, people on this uh, ad hoc committee can go and talk to whoever they want to gather information, but uh, members of the public that are not on the board cannot be on the uh, ad hoc committee. Thanks.
So I guess I, one question is, is Rick's comment the one thing that we would want to, to go for? Or should we try to do a little bit more homework and look at the scope of things that could be included? Sure. Uh, you've got a county council, and you know you have X number of individuals that all have some idea of, about how to deal with this. And I think it is you know start at the top instead of the bottom, and see what you know what the consensus is if there is a consensus about what they think could be done, because these are the people that control the purse. I guess I'm not sure about, I mean, we're supposed to advise them and not necessarily they advise us. Well, but I mean, let's that, that, get real. This is the real world. This has got to go back and forth. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I, I believe that most of the people that are currently on the council are by and large pretty bright folks. And they're just trying to figure it out. In the last couple of years, it hasn't been easy. And just trying to figure out what the logistics of doing that would be. I mean, certainly individually, we can talk to our council members. Um, oh, I certainly have talked to mine. Go ahead. No, no, I'm just saying that's one way to get that read and then bring it back to, to the commission uh, to decide whether there's a particular avenue we want to push. Well, I think that's in, in, the, in, the, in the following along the ideas that sooner is going to be better than later. The sooner we get that those doors open to have open dialogue with what what our elected officials are willing to support, and not spending a lot of time and energy on things that, that look good to us, but we're not going to get any traction on. Take a win where you can get it. Well, the council's in the same kind of bind we are. We can't have a lot of discussions off on the side as a group. Right. It has when to be all, discussion. When we're, all sitting, when we're all sitting at the table. In public fora. In public forum. And not only this, but that, to me, that starts to build some public confidence in we actually want to fix the problem. Well, the closest, the closest I could see is maybe following up and, and I'd be willing to do it with um, Tim Richards. He heads the Regenerative Agriculture, Water, Environmental, I can't even remember all the names of it, um, and, and see whether or not there is a, a structure that he could see for that kind of conversation. That committee is the one that's supposed to um, organize discussions uh, on behalf of the council. Although the it's, a, it's everybody on the council. So I haven't really figured out that their committee yeah. structure, <laughs> but, but you're, 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 yeah, you, you got it. You got it exactly. That is a, that's a great place to start. I don't know, I guess, uh, it's the question and Claire that you know trying to find out how how do we have just open discussions with the council at least committee on knocking around ideas well i mean we know what's wrong <laughs> it's a laundry list that's why i wrote it up trying to you know, coalesce when you set out to, when you set out to fix things the first thing you got to know is what don't work well, we got that part. Sorry, Georgine, I heard my name. 
<laughs> Woke you up, huh? Um, it was the question of, of how do we interact with the council or its committees in a more general discussion format rather than these formal letters communication? Yeah, I mean, off the top of my head, I don't think there is an avenue for that. I think you guys are restricted um, in, in what you can and cannot do. I think, you know, you can provide advice to DEM. So you guys, you know, you have parameters that you have to deal with. So I think, um, you know, I didn't hear exactly what uh, John was saying, but it seems like John was saying that um, you guys should narrow your focus to what you want to achieve. So if you, um, as a board, kind of decide what you want to put your weight towards, then we can think of a strategy within the parameters to go about doing that. Um, and I can assist with that. You know, council has rules, we have rules. Um, but I think maybe start there first, figure out what you want to do, and then we'll think about how to legally achieve that. But okay. it's, it's um, having like a combined meeting where you guys just brainstorm with council. I don't think there's an avenue right now. I can, I can look into that, but um, I've never seen that before. Um, well, and that's exactly the point. That's exactly why we are where we are. Yeah. Because we I mean, yeah. I tried this, this approach for 30 years that I can prove. And the discussion has not moved all that much in any positive direction in that time. So we've got to try something different. Well, I want to get Lee has had his hand up for a while. Lee McIntosh, what, you have so, a comment? Um, yeah, I think uh, Commissioner Gaffney's suggestion is a good idea because um, I, I remember in a previous meeting that DM had mentioned that they were already in talks or thinking about working with those two companies and um, like with the life so the assessment that we that DEM said they were trying to work on, but they didn't have funding. So we supported that and the council supported money for that. So I think if we work with where DEM wants to focus and uh, ask the council to support those uh, endeavors, and I think we might have more success in what we're trying to push through. And I might have sent a pipe in, but uh, the council did not give specific money for the LCA. DEM found it in their own backyard and, and applied it to uh, the LCA effort. Is that yeah, correct? That's my, that's, that's my recollection. <laughs> so mean, don't get don't get too excited about successes we've had. <laughs> can I can I throw out a, a go ahead, Rick. A possible a possibility and, and um, see what um, our attorney has to say about it. But as I understand it, two of us can meet um, without violation, two commissioners can meet without violation of sunshine laws. Um, and if those commissioners were meeting with a council staff person who was assigned by um, the council member, for instance, if Tim assigned a staff person to communicate with us, would that be legitimate? You're muted. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. It it really depends on what you guys. Um, so yeah, Sunshine allows two board members to uh, they can talk and meet outside of uh, the public meeting, but you can't make any agreement on anything. So um, you guys can go and meet and talk with whoever you want about whatever, as long as you're not making any agreement. Um, about anything regarding board business. So if you're just gathering information or just listening, um, that's fine. And I think um, there's probably something else on that that's tweaking in my brain right now, but um, let me look at the um, Sunshine Guide right now real quick, but that's my general understanding. And I'll 
I'll jump in and correct myself in a second. Okay. What, what I would recommend is if you've got a, someone that you'd like to work with, Rick, can you write it up and send and, and present it to the commission for next month's review and approval? And you could send it out before we actually meet. But you know, what are the specifics that you're talking about? And then we could motion to accept or reject. Yeah, uh, I'm just thinking that if if you're if you're going to reach out to Tim Richards and he's the obvious connection between us and the council, um, the the difference between our commission and the council is that each of the council members has staff people, um, and if any of those staff people have time and they're assigned by their council member to do the work, um, that's something that we don't have. You know, we're, we're just individuals um, providing um, our expertise, our knowledge, um, you know, communications with our uh, constituents. But um, what we don't have is, is paid staff that can pursue an idea. Um, and th there's a lot of complexities to what I'm suggesting um, in, in turning this fish waste into a, a growing profit center for the county. Um, and I don't really think it's fair that one of us has to spend um, hundreds of hours gathering the information necessary. Um, I don't think it's appropriate uh, for us to have to do that. We already know that DEM can't do it. They don't have the staff, they don't have the time. Uh, Ramsey's interested um, because I brought the idea to him and he, and he expressed that interest, but whether or not he can proceed to the point of making the financial decisions to be able to come back to the council and say, you know, we think that this can happen. If this happens, this happens. We need, a, we need land because the windrows that are gonna produce this high value compost um, need to be substantial um, in size. So there, there's a lot of parameters to this that it really, it needs somebody who has the time um, and I'm willing to throw ideas around, but I don't have time to pursue um, the tens or hundreds of hours necessary to come up with the specifics of this. And I don't think that any of us have the time to do that with any of our waste products. Um, and, yeah, we should and I'm not sure that Tim's staff does either. Um, I say I, I'd be willing to make the, the contact with Tim and just find out what are ways that we could further explore? You know, as I said, I did talk with Heather Kimball and she's doing her own brainstorming and touching base with people to collect information. But again, there's only so far they can go. Uh, I'd be amazed if Tim would say, oh sure, I got somebody, can, I can give you a couple hundred hours to go doing research on. But um, I, yeah, I could ask. So I will do that about how we do, can, can do a, kind of a joint research project, if you will. Okay. I will do that, put that down as a me to do and I'll get back to you. Um, D. D. Fulton, you disappeared. How'd you do that? I have no idea. Am I back? I hear you. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Maybe because I raised my hand. Am I back now? I see you. You're fine. Talk. Talk. Okay. Uh, we've been here for 90 minutes. I'm going to propose a five minute break. Very good. It's 1030. You're right. Um, did you have a, a real quickie, Sinclair, you wanted to throw in? You had your hand up, you took it down. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it at the beginning of the break, if that's okay. At the okay, end. everybody take we'll five. Thanks. Thanks. Sure, you're muted. Okay, I think we're...
still missing people to have a quorum. We got one, two, three, four, five. Are you there, Rick? Or are you frozen? Yeah, you're there. Ah, John. Okay, we've got quorum. We're back on track. Well, <laughs> we're back. Uh, Sinclair, you wanted to make a clarification. Or I just want to make sure that what I was saying is accurate. You know, I'm always second guessing my memory and everything else. But yeah, so um, to, to Rick's question earlier, uh, yes, two members of the board can meet and discuss board business amongst themselves and they can, you know, have somebody else who's not a board member present and they can talk about things as long as they don't make any agreement to vote. Um, and regarding, I forget who brought up this question about, you know, would it be possible for two boards to have like a joint meeting on a shared agenda item? You know, I almost want to say, I, I feel like it could be possible. I haven't seen it happen yet, but um, that's something that could be looked into, you know, if the council had an agenda item, they wanted to talk about something and um, they wanted to have the entire EMC there. So, I mean, maybe it's a possibility where there could have, be a joint meeting, both um, boards have a meeting at the same time. I don't know if that's possible, but I was just thinking, huh, maybe it is, I don't know. Um, the other option that this board has is we have those ad hoc committees, which uh, Georgine, we talked about before, there's also another form of an ad hoc committee where the board can assign two or more of its members, but less than the number of members that would constitute a quorum of the board to present, discuss, or negotiate any position that the board has adopted. So this board could create an ad hoc committee to um, go to council and advise them on something if they had it on their agenda. It's just another option. So there's, there's quite a few options it just depends on on what you guys want to do and how you want to do it anyway i hope that helps okay all right well i'll i'll get a a call in with tim and see how he is comfortable uh regarding his um raw committee uh, either on doing research with us or on meeting with us. Um, but I would like to move along and maybe I'll take a jump. I think even though it's frowned on by Robert's rules, I think it's legal that I can make a motion as chair. Uh, looking at item 5C, I was concerned that we we ought to do some follow-up on what we heard from Mr. K. Uh, and so as a permitted interaction group, I would like to move that- Sorry, we... Chair. Yeah. Peter, Chair, you can ask for a motion. You can ask for it to be so one. moved. No. <laughs> no, but, boy, but, you guys. Talk, but talk you can about... continue to, to describe the motion and someone can- All right, I'll describe a hypothetical Hypothetical motion, and if somebody wants to take it up, we'll play that game. Do you want to know how to do this? Yeah, John. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to hand the chair over to to, to Rick. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. At, for for purposes of this agenda item five C, uh, Rick, I I would like to designate you as acting chair. Are Except. you agreed? okay? Um, as just another member of the EMC, I'd like to move that we appoint an ad hoc committee, AKA permitted interaction group to investigate economic and legislative barriers to collection and processing uh, by private recyclers for waste currently recycled by the county and other items such as electronic waste, alkaline batteries, photographic, uh, photovoltaic panels, plastics, and other recyclables um, that we can investigate and, and understand if there's action to be taken. I second that motion. Discussion. <laughs> Thank you, John. We have a motion and a second, and uh, we're open for discussion. Do we have any 
Anybody wants to say anything about this or do we have volunteers to be members? Well, no, that's inappropriate until we pass the motion. So seeing no um, comments, um, let's move to vote on this subject. Um, all those in favor, raise your hand. Aye. And John, thank you for that. Um, so we have a unanimous, um, uh, well, let me say all those opposed. I don't believe there's anybody not here. Okay, we the motion passes and I will leave it to um, Georgine to put it in writing and uh, move the process along. And I pass the chairmanship back to Georgine. Okay, um, love, love these rules. Um, I had uh, spoken with uh, Carrie Ho'opi'i and she is interested in being on the group as is Melissa Cardwell. We need to keep it to four or less so that we don't approach quorum. Uh, and again, I'll let Sinclair pipe up if he wishes to, but this is an investigation. Go talk to whoever you wanna to talk to. Um, and in my mind, you can make the scope as, as broad or narrow as you've got time to deal with it. Like Rick said, we're all just volunteers on here. So I'm not um, expecting that we're gonna have the end all be all about uh, private recyclers. But uh, the basic idea would be find out what's in the way that we can have uh, influence over by going to council and uh, identify where, where are the barriers, where have we set up either DEM rules or uh, council legislation, or maybe it's gonna be at, at the state level that really hinder the ability of these um, private organizations to, to do recycling that everybody wants to do. Um, and the, the process as I understand it is that you go talk to whoever you want to talk to, we can throw some ideas at you, um, come up with a set of findings and um, possible recommendations, then bring it back to the a next EMC meeting where we would um, hear what you found out. And so would the public hear what you found out. And then we'd have a third meeting where we would um, potentially take action, do discussion and, and make a motion. Um, and, and something like um, proposing to the, the council that certain uh, legislative changes are necessary at either the county or the state level. Um, or there might be some administrative rule changes uh, the DEM could pull off on its own. Uh, so that's what we'd be looking for with this group and um, whoever would be interested in participating, timing, yeah, we're running up into um, holidays. Uh, not sure if we have to set a date certain or we wait until you guys say we're ready to, to present and get it back on the agenda. Sinclair, you have a You don't need a, a specific date. They can go, um, you're gonna have to, you know, assign members and then assign the scope and vote on that. And then they go investigate. And then when they're ready, put it back on the agenda for their findings. So um, are there others who would like to be on this group trying to find out how we can knock down some barriers? You're not all raising your hand. Connectivity is always my problem. Yeah. Okay, well, it makes me a little uncomfortable <laughs> putting up people who aren't here, but they did say that they were interested um, and uh, may have some questions on scope, um, but I would uh, nominate um, Melissa Cardwell and Carrie Ho'opi'i and myself to be on this ad hoc committee slash pig permitted investigation group. And I guess that needs to be a motion. 
So make it a motion that, that the three of us would would constitute this group trying to pull together more detail. D. So moved. Oh, thank you. Second. And I got a couple seconds. Um, I'll say I'm in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay. I, will... Jean, I, I apologize. I couldn't um, volunteer for this because I got too much on my plate right now, but I, I do have an addition, um, I think that's appropriate uh, based on what Mike was saying about the difficulty of getting qualified people um, I wonder if part of what this um, permitted action group can do would be also outreach to the University of Hawaii and the community college system to see whether or not the training necessary uh, for some of the staff positions that are holding DEM back couldn't be done on island. Um, in other words, can the university support uh, DEM by providing the training that they that's, that's apparently lacking. I guess it could be couched as part of the economic barriers. Well, as I understood it from Mike, it's an educational barrier. Um, the skill sets that are necessary are being trained here. Yeah, this is more from the perspective of the the recyclers that exist on this island, whether it's scrap metal, Mr. K's, Atlas, um, perhaps the DIY oil people, um, e-waste where where it goes over to Enviro Services. Um, what are what's keeping them from taking in? more recyclables is the focus of this group. Okay, well, I, that makes sense. We'll limit that. But I, I still think that it's a subject that it, it's worthy it's of- a subject that, that needs to be investigated. And if anybody would like to personally take that on and bring back, and Elise is raising her hand. Speak, Elise. I, uh, I, can, I can take on that task. Um, Commissioner Gaffney, I, um, I'd be happy to look into that, what the requirements are of the positions and how that correlates to the, um, you know, the courses offered at UH or HCC. Just one more thought on that. I think it's a great suggestion just because it's sad how much we underutilize and leverage resources we have here, especially while being with the university. And having what we have here, you know, uh, just to think outside the box, it may not be, well, it, it would be great. I don't know. So I can't speak to it. It would be great if there are trainings available that could fix that issue. Another thought is just that, uh, you know, we have several projects where we just have MOAs with the county in order to support investigations into resource management. So that might be another way to leverage university resources is whether it's through faculty or students or both working together to do some of what we're talking about here with investigating certain matters and delivering back a report, um, you know, that they're there and that could be great projects and that can all be facilitated through MOAs that don't necessarily, I mean, if there's funds to support student time and PI time, that's great. If not, it might just align well and give them projects to focus on. Um, you know, like I work through the data science program, we have faculty in business, we have faculty in, in computer science, math, there's all these disciplines that could be participating in what you're talking about or what we talk about as issues um, just through MOUs. So yeah, that's just some food for thought. I think it's great. And it's also allowed for the two of you to talk offline and come back to us with an agenda item on Path Forward. So, um, Good ideas. And, and just for the record, uh, Elise, so you're aware, uh, Ramsey has taught um, some of these uh, wastewater management education courses in his previous life in California. So um, mm -hmm. frankly, I'm not sure that we wanna burden him <laughs> with any more work than he already has. Um, but he, he did mention that in, in light of, of, of what we're talking about. So it's, it's possible that a partnership between him and the community college system 
um, could result in it, at the very least him bringing his syllabus um, and uh, suggesting somebody who can teach mm. uh, some of these courses. Mm. Great info. Okay, we need to move on. We've got these guys from DEM and we, we need to encourage them. Um, we, uh, as first, first item of new business, I don't know if you saw that there is a conflict with council meetings uh, twice next year. It was in our resource guide. I think it was uh, in, I'm blanking, which dates? Peter, you're you're the one who February and March. Um, for February and March. I we routinely have these meetings on Wednesday morning, fourth Wednesday. It bumps into when John teaches his class. So <laughs> we know there's a conflict there. Um, but it seems like it makes sense not to uh, overlap with council because sometimes we do have council listening in and participating in our meetings. Um, Thoughts, comments, restrictions people have? I have a, a further question to that subject. Um, the, the day of council meetings is obviously important and a conflict, but they also have um, committee meetings on other days. So I think it's probably- The day before, the day before their meet, that the council meet? I don't know. I mean, I, yeah. I just wanted to bring that up because it, it would be foolish for us to be meeting on a day when uh, Tim Richards, for instance, is meeting with his uh, committee and that would mean that he couldn't participate and uh, at least observe what we're doing. That's I'm correct. Tuesdays are normally committee days. Hmm? What'd you say, Peter? Tuesdays are normally committee days, the day before the council meeting. Okay. I guess I, would it be okay for those two known conflicts to move a day to a Thursday morning? Yeah, I was just going to say, because I, I have to jump off to teach class. I, I can only miss so many on Wednesdays. Um, so yeah, the Thursdays, I teach Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So Tuesdays, Thursdays are good for me. But you know, we've discussed this before. I know there's a lot. You can, it can definitely be a domino effect once you change the date so you know i'm fine with just doing the best i can but if those dates change to tuesdays thursdays that'll actually work better for me so no problems there which, which opens the question whether people want to move all our all our meetings to a standard day to thursday mornings instead of wednesday mornings it doesn't matter to me John, John says it's no preference for him. Same here. Does anybody have a problem with Thursday mornings? The fourth Thursday? I make a motion that we move all of our meetings to the fourth Thursday. Is that okay by you, Peter? And, and where you get hauled off to? Except for Thanksgiving, but yeah, for the most part. <laughs> Okay, do we need a motion? Uh, is that a motion and a second? I made a motion. Yeah, John made the motion to move us to Thursday, for Thursdays, except for Thanksgiving. You're talking about 2022. No, not this year. What is, what is Christmas? Mm -hmm. So it's Sunday. Okay, so we don't need to worry about Christmas next year. But we do need to worry about Thanksgiving. Yeah. And that, I guess that can be on the Wednesday. It's no problem. We move it one day before. And unless it conflicts with council. Or advance it a week. Mm. The 17th. Okay, so we need, John, we need you to amend your motion to move EMC meetings to the fourth Thursday mornings, except for November 22 to the third Thursday of November. I so move. And I get a second on that. 
Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And I assume we can always make a change as long as we give adequate public notice if for some reason we run into trouble with that. Okay, Thursday. Um, we've been uh, offered the opportunity to talk about the proposed change to DEM rules for trailers um, at transfer stations. Uh, it would uh, be a rule 9-17 of the, the rules of practice and procedure for DEM. This is going to be presented uh, to council on November 2nd. Uh, if anybody had a chance to look at the language um, and what changes. If not, I looked at it and sent some <laughs> advice changes. I have no idea what um, any responses from there. There's a requirement that in order to designate the transfer stations where trailers can go once a week uh, is uh, requires written concurrence from the mayor and corporate council. And I thought that was overkill, but if they want to do that, that's fine. And the only other comment I had was at the paragraph D, which was talking about notifying the public. I thought they should mention site signage. So, Are there any transfer stations that don't meet those dimensions? Um, yeah, they're, they're talking about only designating five transfer stations. And Mike, are you online? Because I'm blanking on, you know, it's Waimea, Kalakehe. Which which five are you thinking about right now? So the the five would be Waimea, would be Kalakehe, it would be Ka, it would be Waiohinu, and it would be I believe it would be Pahoa. And those are the ones that, that safety reviews have been done and you think without too much effort, but still effort could handle trailers driving that, in. That's correct. Um, Sorry, Peter again, was Hilo one of them? I was mentioned in the discussion to council. I know that it was it was a discussion, but I, I'm trying to recall the, the safety um, the safety teams um, responses and, and I think, you know, speaking with the director, um, there was going to be some additional um, issues to make that happen. I don't know that we need at this time, since the language isn't final, uh, a particular motion, um, but maybe more a, a sense of the EMC that this approach is a reasonable one, that at least there'll be some designated transfer stations where people can take their trailer, but it'll be limited in location and, and days. Lee, you have a comment. Lee McIntosh. Uh, actually, I have several comments. Um, I, use, um, I use a trailer, so I noticed that, um, well, first off, the biggest concern was that they didn't want us to back trailers into I'm not sure what the transfer stations will look like. They're currently rebuilding ours, but uh, um, not being able to back in is, is uh, I mean, that means you're going to have to walk 30 feet to get to the chute from your trailer. Um, and whether you go forward or back in, you're going to have to back up at some time. Uh, unless you can just drive sideways to it and throw it off. I, I'm not sure how they're designed. Uh, that was one concern. Another was that uh, the dimensions of the trailer, uh, it goes for six by nine. Uh, most trailers on the island are four by eight or five by 10. So, you know, you're kind of 
cutting out five by ten trailers, and you know, I'm surprised he would pick six feet, six foot trailers because that's usually wider vehicles, and that would be more difficult to uh, maneuver. But I mean, if you're going to have six by nine, why not make it six by twelve? Because uh, from what I understand, that's the largest, um, you know, residential trailer that's sold uh, on the island by Home Depot. But it's a special order, so you don't see too many of those. Um, let's see. If I, uh, oh, and the other thing was I didn't understand why. Uh, I mean, the trailers are supposed to have, you know, the stickers on it. Uh, not many are registered, but those that are, you know, they're just like the vehicles, you know, they have the stickers on them. So it should be unnecessary for the employees that need to um, ask or to see documentation because it's plastered there on the trailer. Uh, and if it isn't, then they're not in compliance. And really, that's, I think that would be more of an issue for the police department. If they want to enforce that, have a police officer sitting there and cite, giving citations rather than employees, because I know the director has mentioned in the past that he's concerned about employees trying to enforce the rules on themselves by themselves. And I think this would be just asking for lots of trouble uh, in that regard. Um, those were pretty much the main issues I saw when I was looking at the proposed amendments and hope some things might change before they're finally approved. Are there any other comments you'd like to pass on to Mike? Yeah. John? So I was on the Solid Waste Advisory Commission when you know they started to, the rebuild of the transfer stations. And uh, they even took us on a tour of how they were doing this on Oahu and on Maui. And there they built them so that you were pulling through. You weren't having to back up. And that is the whole problem with the trailer issue here. The new transfer stations that the county has built are not pulled through. So it, it's created, a, they've created a huge hassle. And eliminating the trailers, people who don't have trucks are not going to load their green waste uh, into their automobile. And this is going to lead directly to a lot of illegal dumping if we don't address their needs. So uh, put us right out between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, I've, I've got a comment too. Um, the I was recently, I needed to use the Waimea transfer station. I'd never been there before. Um, and it is beautifully set up for trailers. Um, and it's exactly what Lee just described. You pull up alongside the mm -hmm. dump, the, the puka, um, and offload off the side of the trailer. So there's no backing involved whatsoever. And if in the best case, best world situation, if we could have all future transfer stations designed that way, that would be a winner because then people who really don't have any experience backing trailers up uh, on a regular basis wouldn't be forced into that situation. Okay, I, my impression is the five that are selected or whatever are drive-through. That's, that's not correct. Kealake, hey, there's absolutely no way you there's could no drive through. You, you have, not only do you have to back up, you have to back up in a long line of other vehicles that are in three parallel rows. If you go on Saturday and Sunday to Kealake, hey, because I do regularly with, with my truck full of green waste, um, trailers are problematic because if people don't know how to back a trailer properly, they're in line six or seven cars deep uh, in parallel lines that are not even as wide as a, as a single lane on a roadway. So I, I'm not saying we shouldn't allow it at Kealakehe, but um, there's definitely a potential for accidents. Mike, could you comment on, on uh, the schedule? I, my impression was you guys would designate a day a week
Right. I, I do know that the director was asking about a day a week. Um, I, I don't have any prepared comments about that. I, I do know yeah. that he came up and talked to me about it. Um, the, the issue I just wanted to share with everybody here is, and again, um, I'm not trying to dodge the question, but um, I, the, the issue that you had brought up earlier where any of the, the discussions about this um, would be going through the mayor and the court council and their input, um, I'm not sure. The suggestion is that we would allow for the trailers to be able to come in on this one day a week. And so do we then say that it is now okay absent any of the design changes or do we say that no one else can come in except for trailers? And then how does that affect everybody else who had wanted to come in any particular day that we had wanted to um, pick? So that's kind of where the discussion is happening right now is how best to approach that. I, I don't know if I've gotten any um, response. I mean, I'm willing, I, I listened to the director if he wants it to happen whatever day, but that's a big problem for me because I need now to direct my folks out in the field what the proper thing is. And you know, I, I have some reservations about putting my pe people out there to say, no to half the residents, two days not a day you can come in. Mm -hmm. Today's a day for trailers or to be able to answer to corp council saying, hey, I know that we're talking about designing a better you know, transfer station before we went ahead and did this. So that's the discussion that's happening right now with the, the department as far as from the division. Um, and again, I apologize. I know that you're looking for answers, but these are some questions that I, I need to have answered before I can implement anything in the field. I am not trying to dodge that. It's, serious questions that I, I don't have an answer to. But okay. uh, no, I, I understand. Ask me. And, and I think I, my comment was that we'll have another ability when the final language um, gets proposed. So this isn't the end of comment. I just thought it would be an opportunity for us to, to give some thoughts and uh, direction at this stage. So that's fine. I don't think that it's enough to only notify the public through electronic media and the website. Most people who show up to the transfer station, I'm not checking my phone to see if I can or can't go, I just go. And the public needs to be notified well ahead of the changes because there's gonna be a lot of frustrated people, especially when they're used to going to Cal or someplace that didn't have restrictions. Um, and with the last time, you know, closing down the transfer stations, I mean, that was very frustrating for the public. Um, so there, there has to be another avenue, either through, like Georgine said, signage on the site well ahead of time to let people know and simple, you know, not a 10, you know, 10 line item rules about the trailers, but just <laughs> a heads up and, and, May, I don't know if it has to be at all transfer stations or also letting them know where to go. Um, John here, if I can chime in. Yeah, go ahead, John. I'll get you next, Dee. On the uh, on this trailer thing, what they did on Oahu when we took the tour, Oahu was uh, in the process of, of uh, dealing with their transfer stations. And they set up some uh, temporary uh, side drop-offs so you could pull through, the, pull the trailer through and drop off on either side of the ramp that you were up on until they, they built something more permanent. And they weren't sure how that was going to work to begin with. but. Um, you know, they, they, they played with it and they have certainly uh, have back then even had a much higher volume than we did. And it seemed to work out really well for them. So maybe we could look into doing something like that. Um, you know, because the, the ramp system and everything was portable, they just simply put a, put a box, you know, on either side and uh, let, it, let people pull through. So, um, yeah. Okay, thanks, John. D, you had a comment. D, Fulton. 
error. Had to hit the right button for unmuting. Okay, you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, it seems like three fourths of the world gets their news these days by way of social media rather than legitimate news outlets. So does the DEM have a social media presence or is there some way to get this out there via apps like next door? Because I mean, this, this is how the news gets out these days. I mean, I, if I can answer that real quickly, the division does have a, um, they have an ability to um, put out messages uh, like Elisa was saying earlier, not everyone has um, signed up for it. Um, it's at every one of our stations. There's a, you know, there's a the QR code, and then there's directions on how you can go if you didn't want to choose to do a QR code, and you can sign up for it. And it's similar to um, what the police use and civil defense uses. You know, you can you can sign up for the program and, and find out about you know fires in your area or dust storms or traffic accidents. Similarly, you can do the same for solid waste. Something that happens in your area, um, it'll alert you. So if you sign up for the, the, the thing, I would caution everybody though that, that because it's a, um, it's a countywide system, um, be careful about what you're signing up for because you might be just inundated with stuff that you're not, you know, it doesn't necessarily affect you. You know, if you're living in um, Hilo, he might not necessarily need to find out what's happening out in Kealake and vice versa. But I, we do I have guess something I would, I would uh, agree with Dee that that's probably Facebook network. I mean, they're, they're neighbors, whatever it's called. Um, it's another way to do it. It's also one where Senna does it, I don't know, when she goes to the bathroom, she tries to update some of the sites, um, spare time. They're, they're, they take staff to keep social media up and live. So uh, just another element, but I agree with you. You try to find what, what means of communication work that people actually use. So um, in general, that's our comment, I, I think is uh, try to get the word out as big and broad as you can, because somebody's going to be irritated when they drive up to the door with their trailer and they can't get in. Um, so, so can I can ask in. Mike a follow up question, Georgine, on this? Sure. Um, I'm I'm on the county system, so I was aware that the saddle road was closed today. Um, is DEM currently using that system to notify people that a transfer station is closed for the day? It's a it's a similar system. Yes, the same system that the civil defense uses to alert people about road closures. It's through a site called Everbridge, and we use the the same um, social. I mean, the same alert system. Yes, but you have to you have to sign up for that specific part of the alert system. Is that what you're saying? For environmental management, yes, Got like, it. like okay. you would, you know, yeah. Senna it has put the link in the chat, so if you want to check on that. Um, it's, it's their website and then emergency preparations, something or other. Um, Elise, you had a question? Yes, a couple last things. Um, I was gonna suggest doing a, a press release on the changes too. And um, to Lee's point about having your staff now monitor the vehicle registrations, how about with item B on the rules? I know it has to be said, but just saying, you know, all trailers, will follow DMV rules or something like that. So they're not in a position to have to do another check that should be, like he said, done by, enforced by another department. Any other comments on this topic? And, and obviously if you have any additional comments, you can individually send them in to DEM. And I'm sure the council will have plenty of comments and you can communicate through your counselor too. Um, if I can, seeing no other hands up, I'd like to move um, 
to the issue of reinstatement of the residential tipping fee. Um, it had been um, the exemption for the credit for residential waste being hauled to the landfill um, had been eliminated. And now the idea is to put it back so the credit would exist. Is that correct, Matt? Mike? That, that's correct. There's a discussion about that right now. And does the council again have any comments you'd like to pass on about that? I would say it was an item, not a recommendation per se, but a, an item of something to consider in the uh, integrated solid waste management plan as a source of revenue. I mean, basically, we're giving it away for free again, and it's not free. It costs money to put something in the landfill. Um, but we wanted to encourage people to at least put it in a landfill and not in the backyard. Um, and offering the credit again was uh, perhaps a, a political necessity at this time. Um, but it's still another way that we're kicking ourselves by not collecting revenue around that service. My two cents. Well, well, John here. I mean, I don't, I don't disagree, obviously, with the idea we should be collecting, the, somebody should be collecting the revenue for the disposal. I'm just not sure that the way we're going about it is, is uh, either going to be popular or does not is not going to encourage a whole lot more illegal dumping. I mean, again, this is getting back to that uh, pay at the point of purchase idea. You've already got the money in the bank. You don't have to try to, to wiggle it out of somebody with a trailer full of rubbish. Enough said. Any, any other thoughts to pass on to DEM on this issue? This is Commission Gosh, um, I think as long as it's free for residents, I think the um, credit for the haulers, I think is only fair because um, they're, they're not creating additional uh, refuse. All they're doing is they're taking it and dumping it for the resident that may or may not be able to do it on their own. So it's providing a service for, especially your seniors, that, isn't available otherwise. Anybody else? Okay, I'm gonna move on and, and the, the council will probably have plenty of opinions to offer on this. Um, I, th I think we're, we're all, struggling with the fact that there needs to be revenue and there needs to be recognition that these services are not free, somebody's paying for it. And so how do we pay for it uh, equitably? Um, next, uh, did anybody have any other uh, rules that we may recommend for revision at this time? I don't think we're ready to. That's part of what this um, new ad hoc committee may come up with some recommendations that we can review at that time. But I don't think we have anything ready to hand over at this point. Um, so I hope you took the time to listen to the presentation that um, Ramsey and Eric, I'm going to mess his name up, um, <laughs> gave to the uh, county council. Um, it's in our, our uh, the director's report at the tail end of the director's report um, and basically laying out the, the woeful status 
<laughs> why our wastewater is uh, in need of so much money. Um, I know Dora, are you still on the line? Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm still here. So if there are any comments that you would like to make or if any of the commissioners have a question in follow up to what was presented. Uh, no, no, no comment. <laughs> it was a lot of comment. It was a very uncomfortable meeting to watch. Um, and I'm sure it must have been for Ramsey to sit through. Uh, and I think it's it's part of the, the challenge that we as a commission face of how can we help come up with solutions. Anybody got a printing press that can churn out some money for these kids? Well, I just want to thank Dora for hanging in. John Olson here. Thank you, Dora. You're welcome. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Okay, again, I would encourage, uh, definitely look through the presentation slides, but also if you can uh, manage it, uh, listening to where the council members were coming from, uh, what the key issues are. Obviously, we know it's funding, personnel issues, and compliance with the array of um, EPA actions against us that are, that are driving the need uh, for um, EM resources. Um, so I think we'll move on now to the uh, item seven. Sorry, he has her hand up. Oh, Dee, Dee, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm coming late here, but I, I do have a question. Um, and for those who didn't uh, watch the video, the slides are also contained in a link. And uh, <laughs> I have not personally visited the Hilo wastewater treatment plant, but what was presented in that report was uh, pretty stunning. If I can just get some statistics here. Uh, I'm looking at the slides and what it says is 86% of all the assets at Hilo wastewater treatment plant are condition five failed or for rehab required. <clears throat> There's some really stunning photos attached. It's a, a, actually a very uh, effective and, and dramatic presentation that was made uh, about the state of decay of the Hilo wastewater treatment plant. Um, this, this does raise a lot of questions about uh, how effectively that plant is functioning. Um, and we're getting into regulatory areas here. Um, so the question is, is, is a Hilo wastewater treatment plant able to consistently meet secondary standards? And I direct that to um, Dora Beck, please. Yeah, it is currently meeting permit requirements, uh, the MPS permit requirements. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of um, deterioration and right now lack of redundancy and um, we've had projects on the CIP list for years and years to try and address these issues um, but you know as each year goes by there's lack of funds it's either lack of funds or a lack of staffing we need both basically and um, we're you know for both areas, it's just been depressing. So, but in answer to your question, we are meeting permit limits, discharge limits. Any other follow-up, Dee? Uh, just, just my sympathy uh, for the position that all the, the folks, the good people at DEM find themselves in from, from the top down to the bottom. I mean, I, I, I have friends that have people working over at the wastewater treatment plant in Hilo, 
And, you know, I hear how guys are getting sent all over the island. Um, and it's just, it's the, we've deferred, the, the county government has deferred maintenance on our wastewater treatment system for decades. And now it's catching up to us and we're coming to a point of, of crisis. But it's not the fault of the people who are working in the wastewater. It's the lack of funding to, to that department. And at this point, we're gonna to need to do anything we can to get more funding going to DEM. Thank you, Dee. Lee McIntosh, you have a comment? Can't hear you. <laughs> Lee, Lee, you're cutting in and out. I'm not able to hear you well. Are others? No, I can't hear How is that? A little better. I think he's asking about whether or not you've got the funding for Nalehu and, and Pahala. And if if you've got that money, is that the best place to put it? Or should it be directed to Hilo? No, that's not what you were meaning. I can barely hear you. Can you type it up in the chat? Well, while he's he's typing or dealing with that, I had a question about um, oh, what the the WIFIA um, monies that is was approved to be used to buy generators at several treatment sites. I was just curious why generators was number one for that money, or is it just a function of how that money can be used? Dora? Yeah, I, I think you're talking about the WIFIA grant monies of close to $50 million. Is that the one yeah. you're talking about? Um, my understanding is that when I talked to uh, Deputy Director Brenda Yokepa Moses, I think she said it was, it had to be for specific use um, because I had inquired about whether that money can be used to help us with um, some of our repairs that are, are needed. Um, so I, I don't know too much about that. That was the one that she pursued. I think she she um, she probably had more information on it. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't have the information on it. All right, maybe it's something we can follow up again. I, I think in general, if you're going for federal money, there are so many restrictions around what you can do with it, how many hoops you have to go through to get it and to maintain it, um, that it's it's not free money. It takes a lot of effort yeah. and you've got to be really careful how you ask for it. Okay, I'm gonna read um, Lee's question. Uh, does the county already have the funding for the Pahala and Naalehu plants? I thought the county was still looking for funds. So do you have a um, I believe for Pahala, uh, Eric could probably answer this question better because uh, he's been directly involved with Nalehu and Pahala. Um, but I believe that there's been, there's SRF funding um, that's 
been, it, I don't know if it's committed, but um, there is SRO funding for Pahala. Nalehu, there might be, I'm not so sure what the status is. Um, I do know that um, DOH, their stash of money as far as distributing it each year is limited as well. So even if it's an, an X amount of money, um, they can only reimburse a certain amount each year. But so in answer to the question, um, I do know there's SRF money for Bahala. Does that help you, Lee? The details of it, um, probably better to ask. Uh, I'll have to check with uh, Eric Takamura. OK, well, I guarantee you the questions will be there for Nalejo and Bahala at every one of our meetings until they're finally complete. Um, so we'll, we'll try to catch it next time. Um, again, if you watch the presentation that was made um, by Ramsey to the, the council and, and the Rawin committee, um, that was my understanding is that Pahala's covered Nalehu not so much. Um, and that uh, they're they're moving ahead on that. Um, are there any uh, questions? Oh, wait, we go back to the the legislative update. Um, and how do I see? We got to get back to that report. I didn't print it out. Um, The, the question had been comment had been made earlier about um, the council and talking about monies uh, given already or dedicated to uh, DEM for uh, innovative wastewater. Uh, just wanted to, to clarify, at least as my understanding, uh, resolution 239-21, uh, it was a resolution of a topic that Heather Kimball is now allowed to bring to the uh, Hawaii, oh, you gave me the name of that thing, the HSAC, the council group um, from all the different counties. Uh, so they're they're just opening the door to yeah, the whole state needs to look for innovative ways to fund wastewater because we're not the only county that's suffering. In fact, it's a national issue, if not international. Um, so all this is doing is saying that the HSAC can include it in their um, discussion package that they're gonna take to the state legislature. Um, and we, I think as a uh, mission are, you know, almost obligated to come up with what are some of those innovative ways to fund. Um, and I think you could see also in uh, testimony uh, and other discussions that, that Rick has had, um, trying to look at the same kinds of things I had in, in that uh, solid waste thing, you know, private public partnerships, um, looking for ways to, to sell the reused water rather than treated as waste. Um, and we could sell the compost that's that's from the sludge in the wastewater treatment plant. So looking at it as a source of revenue, getting creative, looking at where we might need to eliminate some of the legal legislative um, barriers, as well as just finding hard cash. Um, so that was, Kind of my my two cents on on the legislative side, um, but if there's other questions that the commissioners have on the report, the director's report that was made, now the time.
Nothing, nothing. Okay, well, um, again, there's there's a you know a fair amount of information in there. Uh, and uh, if there are any follow up questions, I'm sure you can uh, individually contact DEM or uh, ask for them to be put on the agenda for our next meeting. <coughs> So are we done with the director's report, item seven? Okay, um, as far as uh, moving to future agenda items, number eight, um, we'll uh, see what kind of progress is, is made by the, the new ad hoc committee on barriers to private recycling. Um, I will talk with uh, Tim Richards and see what kind of communications we can have with the council in brainstorming mode. Um, and if there are other items that you know we wanna get on the agenda, other than Nalehum Bahala, um, let me know. And I'll get them up. Um, announcements, our next meeting is November 24th, Thanksgiving Eve, if that is a thing. Um, we will uh, still have it as an online meeting. Um, and <laughs> hopefully everybody can figure out how that they can uh, keep connection. Um, but I think I might turn it over to Peter Sir. Uh, there are some new provisions, and maybe Sinclair, I don't see Sinclair's name, so maybe he's got, oh, there he is. Um, there are new sunshine rules for next, starting next year in January, um, and they include a uh, couple of interesting items that I'm still trying to figure out. Um, we would need, if we had, for example, a non-unanimous um, vote for a motion, I need to do a roll call. Um, and then we need to have a quorum on camera uh, at all times. And if we have less than quorum, then we stop until we get quorum back. Um, and one of the uh, requirements is if you're going to have a remote meeting that we offer at least one location for the public to go that has decent Wi-Fi. Um, Peter, do you wanna expound more or talk about exploring it maybe for November's meeting? Yeah, the Office of Information Practices has put out a updated guidebook about how to comply with these new rules that are going into effect on January 1st of next year. So it wouldn't apply for the November one, but as a trial run, I was suggesting in a message to Georgine that maybe we could say, try this uh, location accessible to the public. There's nothing, I don't think, preventing us from starting this up before January and hopefully working on all the, all the bugs. Our, in the non-COVID universe, we would have had a meeting in November at the West Voice Civic Center. So that's where uh, we are probably room reserved at the uh, community holly, community meeting holly, building G. So that's why I was suggesting that would be a place where we could possibly meet up or, or have available for those who want to be there in person. So that could include both um, commissioners as well as members of the public. Um, I don't know if it's something, John, you would want right. to it would be properly or... have to be uh, put in the agenda if we were to do that in advance. No, so. I, I have no problem meeting it. But it, it's, again, it's part of the new requirements that start next year. And part of it was just trying to test it out before we really have to. Um, 
and everybody could continue to participate online, but the room would be available and Peter would be figuring out how to make sure he knows how to work everything. But next year we will have to have a, a location, wherever that location may be. Um, in addition, we may want to you know, take temperature, literally, uh, to see whether we want to have an in-person meeting again. Um, I think, and maybe I should check in with everybody. Last time we talked about this subject, everybody kind of likes this remote because we don't have to drive all over the island to go to, to meetings on the east side, west side. Um, so, and, and I think it's uh, a boon for the public to be able to, um, just call in um, and, and plus we're recording the meeting. So it's, it's a little bit more uh, transparent uh, and easy on the gas mileage. Um, and the saddle road is open again, apparently according to a message that came by, but sometimes it's not and it's a pain in the butt. So um, any, any thoughts, comments? Sinclair. I have a few more. So there was a bunch of updates, like you mentioned, Georgine, that come in effect January. And um, as Peter said, we should start uh, enacting those and, and acting as if uh, they are in effect. And that's the OIP's advice as well, is to just start doing it. Um, one of the kind of bigger things that wasn't mentioned is that when we're doing remote hearings uh, in the future, um, <clears throat> We have to, the board members have to, when they come on, you have to clarify whether there's somebody in the room with you or not. So I, some of you have virtual backgrounds, you know, maybe there's somebody in the background listening, I don't know. Um, so that'll be one thing that at the beginning of the meeting, you know, I, I'm whatever board member, I'm here alone, there's no one in the room with me, or I'm here along with somebody else in the room. Um, the roll call vote, so our office, I, I read a training that somebody else gave to other boards and um, they're recommending uh, roll call on most votes, uh, except for, um, you know, simple things like minutes and adjournment. Um, but um, we can get deeper into this with uh, Georgine and Peter about the logistics. I just wanted to mention those few things. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Sinclair. Uh, anything else about meetings or announcements? Yeah, Georgine, we, we are going to be faced with the task of, of um, uh, adjudication of a um, uh, situation with a, um, a citizen who feels that, that he's being unfairly charged for sewage fees. Um, I received notice of that. Um, and I think it was sent to you as well. So that's, we're gonna have a meeting on that subject soon. So people need to be prepared to go into judicial mode. I don't know if you wanna comment, Sinclair. I mean, there's this process you go through on request for hearing and, and how imminent it is that we'll be doing a hearing. Sorry, <laughs> I thought it was off or on. Um, because uh, it's not on the agenda right now, I'll not say much, but um, our rules provide all kinds of guidance about what we're supposed to do in contested cases or appeals. Um, so when it gets in on the agenda, I'll send out something to everybody to kind of prepare everybody for this. But also, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, um, I'm not going to be here pretty soon, uh, November 13-ish. I'm leaving on maternity to bond with uh, my new baby. So it'll be Kira Wong handling it. But um, if it gets on the agenda, because there's always a possibility that they could be withdrawn, settled, or whatever, um, we'll make sure that you guys are prepared to handle that. So as I understand it, we can have it as part of our standard uh, scheduled meeting, or we can set a separate meeting. You can have a special meeting or put it on your uh, um, 
regular agenda. And I, if I'm not mistaken, once we get it, we have to agendize it within 90 days. Um, so we have some leeway. You guys don't meet in December, right? Yeah, and right now we do, we are not having a meeting in December unless there's everybody wants to have a meeting in December. So, you know, once once we deal with that and we decide when to put it on the agenda, um, we'll make sure that you guys are all prepared to handle that. Okay. But thanks, Rick. I mean, there was a reason we wanted to get the training in um, from last time that we knew we would start seeing these things. And uh, we will, we will have corporate counsel holding our hand and Peter Sir holding our hand to make sure that we go through all the, the steps. It's a little bit more formal. I may, I may turn over running the meeting to you, Rick, as the vice chair, because um, I just love those kind of procedures. <laughs> but we'll do it right and, and we'll get heads up and get information out to you. Um, would people like to, to receive the new Sunshine Act language? Why, why don't we go ahead, Peter, can you send that out to all the, the commissioners just so they've got it to yep. refer to if they want we'll to? Thank you. Um, Georgine, if it, yeah. just quickly I'd comment. I, I think that if, if we're gonna handle one of these appeals, having never done it before, um, and considering that every meeting is very full and we always run over, um, adding the appeal to a regular meeting essentially means we get nothing else done or could mean that depending on the co complexity of the appeal right. um, and, and how prepared we are to handle it, um, having never done it before. So I would argue at least for the first appeal that we're faced with that we should uh, have a special meeting. I, I'm inclined to agree with you just as a, a learning experience. Um, I believe we can also do them remotely as long as we follow all the new rules, correct, Sinclair? So um, you'll get plenty of notice. There needs to be public notice. Um, so it's it's not going to happen next week, um, but it is it is coming. So reread this the materials that we had presented to us before. Any other comments, questions before? Somebody motions to adjourn? So moved. Have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much, guys. See you next time. And Sinclair, the best. Hope it goes smooth as can be. And you'll have a ball. Staying up all night. <laughs> it's wonderful you're going to help. <laughs>